welcome back to the god medicine coffee channel i am rihanna and in this video i am going to be vlogging myself making the acne um, cardigan so i know this is not what i normally do on my channel but um after making my last garment the movie sweater which i posted on my instagram please check it out um i kind of wanted to document myself making this project because it is a little bit difficult in terms of the technique and it's also something that i really wanted to make since last year since the pattern dropped so i kind of wanted to you know document my experience making um this project so i did um do a video two videos actually previously talking about some of the stuff that I knitted last year so feel free to check out those videos but yeah so this video I'm going to be documenting myself making the acne cardigan by um, petite knit so for the yarn I'll be using um, yarn that I purchased from the woolyyarn.com so I'm using two cones so I have um, they are 100% cotton in this colorway. It doesn't really, the colorway doesn't have a name. It has a number on the inside of the cone there. So this is 100% um, cotton in um, fingering weight. And I also purchased mohair from them. So this is 150 grams of um, silk mohair, 70% mohair 30 percent silk or something like that um and the colorway the number is on the inside of the cone there so um yeah this is the first time i'm using a uh, mohair other than the drops kid silk so i purchased this because it came up a lot cheaper because i think the price of shipping from the wool warehouse um raised so it was making it a little more expensive so i decided to buy it from the woolyon.com instead and um the first thing i noticed about their mohair is that it's not as fluffy as the mohair from um drops but i think it will still work and i kind of wanted to go with a gray kind of silvery color instead of you know matching green green and green together because I kind of wanted to smoke this color out a little bit so I went with that this kind of gray silvery color here so yeah I can already tell it's not as fluffy as the drops but I don't really care I just it does feel kind of it feels nice still feels nice it's probably I know it's probably not the softest mohair in the world but it feels nice still and it was fairly inexpensive so I'm really happy with it and I hope that it works up really well so for this project I'm definitely going to be knitting a swatch because I really want the measurements to come out perfect with this project um, yeah so I'll be knitting up a swatch doing the whole uh, I have some fiber in my mouth so yeah I'll be doing a swatch um, blocking it drying it and everything and making sure that the measurements come up perfect so yeah so I'm just gonna be watching um, swat here on Amazon Prime while I knit my swatch so yeah <laughs> swatch has dried so now I am going to measure it 
I don't think I got gauge. <laughs> I don't think this looks like four inches, but we shall see. Okay, so it looks like I did get gauge after all. So this is one of the brioche stitches. It's one of them there. And yeah, so I'm just gonna count it just to make sure. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I didn't get gauge. I had 17 stitches in 4 inches. So, okay, so I did some math, right? And I worked out how many stitches it's going to take for my bus size with 6 inches of positive ease. And the total amount of stitches in brioche, based on my calculations, came up to less than the amount that they have any pattern for the um, the size extra small. Because I'm looking at um, when they join any pattern where you join the front and the back together, right? That should be like around the bus bus size area, right? And I'm looking at the amount of stitches, the total amount of stitches that you should have on your needle when you join, join the front and the back to get the body and you add stitches on the side for the sleeves and everything. Right, the extra small still has more stitches than how, how much it would take um, because my measurements are saying that I would need at least 185 stitches to make up the my bus circumference plus six inches of positive ease so i added that on and calculated how many you know so it's still less than the amount of total stitches it takes to make up the extra small so i'm wondering if to knit the extra small because i did encounter this when i made the friday tea from petite knits i made it in i think i started off making it in a size small and the small was really big so i ripped the entire thing out i ripped the entire thing out and i remade it in the size extra small and it was still pretty big on me so but granted that for that project i did i think i used the wrong yarn because i think i was supposed to use fingering weight yarn and i used sport weight so i attributed it attributed that you know size being off from from me using the wrong yarn but I'm starting to wonder like I don't know if maybe some of the, the grading for the sizes for these are a bit off I don't know but I think based on my previous experience I'm going to make the extra small and um, see how that goes from there I don't know days because it's been really really hot in Trinidad and I haven't really been motivated to make any coffee so right now I'm going to make myself some cold brew coffee and I'm also going to make some simple syrup I saw a recipe for different um, syrups on YouTube I can't remember the name of the youtuber but she did a video um, showing like different recipes for um, different syrup mixes with like different kind of spices and extracts and stuff like that so i'm gonna follow one of her recipes i don't have all the ingredients but i'm just going to make do with what i have and um yeah i'm gonna make myself some simple syrup and some cold brew coffee okay, so while my syrup is 
going in the background there. I'm going to start my cold brew coffee. Um, just using the grocery store <laughs> coffee grounds that I have here. It's not the best quality, but it doesn't taste bad. I'm using my uh, French press. And some cinnamon and clove and some cinnamon powder because I didn't have enough cinnamon sticks to the syrup so I'm just kind of letting that um, dissolve a little bit and then I'll take it out and let it cool and all that good stuff okay so I took the syrup off the stove and what I'm going to do is um, let the coffee kind of seep for a little bit before I press down the, um, the French press so I could kind of um, infuse a little bit before I distill the coffee bed or whatever so I'm just leaving that there and for a couple hours and then before I go to bed um, I'll press it down and leave it in the fridge so yeah that's it um, I'm just going to take a little bit of a break. I'm watching The Blacklist on Netflix. So I'm going to catch up with that. And then once I feel any mood for it, I'll start back knitting again. But for right now, I'm just kind of tired. Well, tired of knitting, to be honest. A little bit. So I'm taking a break. And then I'll get back at it in a little bit. So today is day seven of knitting the acne. So it's exactly one week since I started, I believe. One week or so, or just, just about a week since I started. So um, I just wanted to show you progress that I've made. Um, so this is my progress so far. I've already completed the right front yoke started the left and i'm almost finished i just have a few more increases to do and then i'll be done and then i'll be joining the body and um splitting for sleeves and all that good stuff so the plan is is when i join for the body i'm just going to knit maybe about an inch or so of the body then i'm going to run um a lifeline through it start the sleeves and then try it on to see how it fits and then I'll know how to do the decreases on the body and if it doesn't look good I could just rip it out and continue from where I ran the lifeline through the body so that is the plan for this so far so I'm just going to finish this left side and I can't wait to start the body I've officially finished um, doing the increases for the front yoke and I've joined everything together so now I'm going to actually start knitting the body but 
I finished in record time. I finished a few minutes till three. So I'm going to stop, take a break now. I'm going to cook myself a meal <laughs> and then um, get ready for tonight. And then later this evening, I will resume missing the body. But I've officially joined all the sections together. So you can see I've joined everything. I think I just have to cast on just a couple stitches under the um, the sleeves, under the armholes. But other than that, I've joined the body. So, yeah, it's coming along. It's coming along. It's a lot slower than I initially thought. I thought I would have been halfway through the body by now. But brioche does work up a lot slower than like other textured um, stitches. So, you know, I guess that's why it's taking me so long, but it's going good, it's going fun so far. I can't complain. So, hey guys, so I, ooh. sorry. Hey guys, so I don't even know what day it is at this point, um, but I just wanted to give you an update on where I've gotten on this cardigan. So I started a sleeve and I had to rip out the sleeve because I did not read the pattern properly. Very important. Like you always hear people say, read throughout the whole pattern first because on the next page had instructions to do when to start the increases on the sleeve. I just read the first part and just started knitting. So I had to rip it out and start over. And because I don't have a circular needle with a circumference small enough, I had to do a blend of DPNs and circular needles. So I started off using DPNs to knit the sleeve and it was just going way too slow. So I decided to add a circular needle with two DPNs to make it go faster because if I just use the um, circular needle alone it's too wide and I can't knit comfortably um, and it affects the tension and this particular needle the um, the cable isn't flexible enough to do magic loop it's really really stiff so this is what my setup is looking like I kind of got this idea from doing the um making the honey clutch from petite knit where you have to use two dpns and a circular so that's what i'm doing and it's coming along still very 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 slowly so i already put in a 16 inch um circular needle on my amazon cart to purchase later on so I may not get to use it for this project, but I'm never going through this ever again to knit a sleeve. Once I have to use a three millimeter uh, needle, I never want to go through this ever again. This is painfully, painfully, painfully slow. It's so inefficient and annoying to have to do, but, and just imagine that this is just one sleeve. I still have another sleeve to knit like this like this and on top of that i was not able to pick up the amount of stitches that i was supposed to so i think the pattern had asked uh, to pick up stitches at a frequency of three out of four rows and i um when i did that i was getting too too many stitches so i did two out of three I picked up two out of every three stitches instead and I was able to pick up just about enough stitches to make the size, the sleeves in size small. So I was just two stitches shy of making the sleeves in the size medium. So I don't know how much of an impact that would have on the size because when I look at other people's um I podcast and stuff it just seems that the sleeves for the acne is pretty snug and I guess um, once you block it it will widen because it's brioche so it will widen out and take up more space and whatnot but 
yeah but i'm kind of i'm still glad that i'm making these sleeves before i finish your body just so that i can have an idea of how it's going to fit so i'll know how long i want to make the body and if i want to still do the decreases to shape the waist and stuff so yeah so this is where i am at so far so i just have the um the body sleeves on hold on my longer um, circular needles and I have this contraption going on over here so that's gonna be me for the rest of the day I'm supposed to have a singing class this evening so I'll take a break for that but in the meantime I'm going to try to make this work yeah. much um, lately because I was away in Tobago for a little staycation vacation situation um, last week so I didn't knit much I did I actually didn't carry um, my project with me because I didn't feel comfortable traveling with my knitting needles because they are stainless steel I don't own any plastic um, needles and I didn't want to risk having them confiscated so I decided not to travel with them so I didn't do much knitting um, last week but um, and I did get kind of bored with the project because um, after trying it on I decided to I've been changing my mind a lot doing this project I know but I decided to stick with the cropped length at least so because of that um, I kind of got bored knitting the body because I um, instead of knitting four buttonholes I have to do three so um, I already did two buttonholes so let me show you already did let me see one one here one buttonhole here and the second one right hope you could see that right so I did the second one so at this point I'm supposed to start knitting the ribbing and I'm supposed to stop knitting the um, the button band do the ribbing and then pick up the stitches and finish the button band like how you would normally do double knitting you pick up going around and then you knit and you pick up and join to the body if you if you understand what I mean so I think I'm supposed to stop but technically you could still you can still do the button band the normal way but I, I'm not too sure why the pattern has you doing it that way but I decided to I'm sticking with the pattern with this one because I don't want to do anything you know to affect the length of the body or anything like that so I'll, I'll follow the instructions and do it that way so I kind of because I'm technically like almost done I decided to kind of stop to um, stop this project for a little bit and I started another project so I did go to um, the mall uh, some earlier this week I went to West Mall and of course every time I go to West Mall I have to stop in craft creators because they usually have like the best selection of um, lion brown woolies I love that yarn I really it's like my favorite that's like my favorite worsted weight yarn to work with so of course I picked up some and I saw 
this really lovely color and I decided to start another project this was a random project that I found on Ravelry again my quest for finding really nice um, v-neck um, sweaters continues and I stumble upon this one it has this really lovely lace um, motif and I wanted to make it so I started it and I didn't buy enough yarn I definitely have to go back and pick up some more because I doubt the amount I just bought three skeins of the woolies I doubt it would be enough to make the sweater so I may have to go back and get some more so this is what I have so far I just love this lace detail I definitely think this this project might be my favorite for the year I really do think so but yeah I'll, I'll talk more about this particular project in another video but this is supposed to be about the acne right <laughs> so that's where I am for now um, I'm almost done I'm almost done but I'm kind of fatigued I think a, a lot of knitters out there or crocheters or hope or you know fiber artists as people say can you know really to kind of you know you start a project and it kind of get bored and you start another one i think we could all relate to that in some way yeah yeah so i don't think that's so bad right but yeah i'm almost done like i doubt i doubt like doing the ribbing and stuff would take very long yeah so i'm yeah, almost so done. another update on the acne um, cardigan I am almost finished like we're almost there so let me just show you my progress so this is where I am so far so we're getting somewhere so I um I finished the three buttonholes but um, I did have to make the distance between the second and the last um, buttonhole a little bit shorter because um, because my calculations are off so it's about the distance is about just two centimeters shorter than the first distance between the first and the second button so it's a little bit shorter but hopefully it doesn't look too awkward once I get buttons on this so I finished um, this side so I just need to finish this side and then I'll be binding off so you see I have the packet um, stitches here on hold this stitch holder here and I already picked up stitches along the ribbing to now finish this part so this part will be extending all the way down here to the bottom and then I'll be binding off the stitches and I'll be done with this project so the only thing now is to finish this bind off find some buttons and then yeah so we have, we are at the home stretch we're almost there and this is the amount of yarn that I have left back so i have a good bit of mohair remaining and a good bit of this cotton um, yarn remaining so we we in a good place so far so I have a long way to go you know I'm done with these sleeves and everything so i cannot wait to just sew on your buttons and then block this thing and really see how you know this thing turns out <laughs>
Hey guys, so I am back with the final results of my acne cardigan. So this is what it looks like. I am finally, finally done with the acne. So finished blocking, finished um, putting on the buttons and everything and I love how it turned out. So I just want to talk a little bit about the pattern. Well, my experience knitting this up. So the construction of this cardigan was a little bit different and new for me personally because um, it required me to um, knit a small piece of the neckband first then you put the stitches on either side on both sides on hold then you start knitting the back yoke the front yoke and then you join front and back together you knit the body and sleeves and all that right and it also required instead of picking up stitches to knit the placket you knitted it together with the body so um you just go straight into the double knitting as you finish your um excuse me your section of brioche stitches then you go straight into your double knitting with so that was definitely a new construction for me and it also was the first time i'd ever knitted an entire full garment in brioche i did attempt to knit the september slipover i cancelled that project because it just wasn't going well and i still don't know what i'm going to do with that yarn but that is another story for another day but this was the first time attempting a full garment in brioche and i would say that it is not as difficult in my opinion as people make it seem like it is tedious maybe because it's a little bit slower than if you knit a garment in full stockinette because it takes two rows to make one knitted stitch in brioche so it will take a little bit longer right because i think this even though i made this cropped this would have taken me about a month and about three weeks to make when usually i would knit up a sweater or a cardigan in like two weeks three weeks tops this took me a month and some more so it definitely does um knitting brioche is definitely more tedious than plain stockinette or you know any other stitch but it's not difficult to do especially if you have experience um doing like double knitted edges so if you would have um, knitted a double knitted edge like this for let's say the champagne cardigan or you did it for like the camisole number five like if you can do double knitting you can do brioche because the, i would say the main difference between brioche and double knitting is that sorry, you would knit these stitches that you had on hold and then you would put the front stitches on hold so brioche is essentially doing the same thing you knit um you knit the front stitches while putting the backs while you slip the back stitches and then you when you turn you knit the slip stitches and you slip the knit stitches but what makes it different is that the yarn over connects the front and the back fabric together so that you don't get the tube so it gets you get a more three-dimensional um fabric rather than a flat fabric that you would get with normal knit stitching so that's like the main difference between brioche so if you have done double knitting before, brioche is should not be a problem. Like this should be should be easy to tackle, in my humble opinion. Um, there weren't any like complex elements added to this. Um, the only thing I would say that kind of threw me off any pattern was where I had to stop doing the double knitting for the placket to do the bottom ribbing for um, this cardigan. And then once you finish your bottom ribbing, then you um, start picking up stitches like you would for any double knitted edge. Uh, and then you finish the, the placket to the bottom and then, you know, you bind off um, the bottom and you have to do that for either side, the left and the right side. And then you bind off, you do your Italian bind off and whatever, right? So that was the only thing that kind of threw me off, but I feel like the instructions were good enough that I knew what to do. So, it wasn't a big of a deal so essentially I enjoyed knitting it except for um, when I had to do the sleeves because I didn't have the correct size needles to do sleeves I don't own any like 16 inch um, needles 
uh, for any size needles. I don't own a 16 inch for three millimeter or four millimeter needles. I, the shortest circumference I have is a 24 inch and that's still too wide to comfortably knit a sleeve. So I had to use my DBNs, which I hate using. I really don't like using DBNs if I can avoid it as much as possible I do. It's just far too cumbersome for me personally. I am a circular needle girl, that's it. But other than that, I thought the pattern was enjoyable to do. Although it was a little tedious, I didn't mind doing it. Um, I definitely like the choice of fabric that I chose for this um, Agnet, although I was not able to get the gauge that was mentioned in the pattern with this yarn. I still love how the fabric turned out. It's really soft, you know, with the because I use cotton and silk mohair together and you know cotton tends to be very dry, but with the added silk mohair it gives the fabric a nice softness that's really nice and it's it just started raining like we're having we're going through a little rainy period here in Trinidad so if you hear any thunder or any rain <laughs> going on in the background that's why right hopefully we don't get a power outage but yeah so with cotton and adding the mohair together with the co cotton adds a nice softness to the fabric gives it a nice drape and so I don't have an issue with pairing, you know, the cotton and the mohair. It still gives a wonderfully soft fabric. And of course, the mohair gives the fabric a nice warmth. I, I've worn this a couple times now since making it. And it keeps me warm, you know. Granted that it's not very cold here <laughs> in Trinidad, but keeps me warm. I have no issues with, you know, being in air conditioning and feeling really cold. This definitely keeps me warm with the mohair and everything. So definitely love how it turned out. Um, this cotton definitely bloomed um, from blocking it. So it, the stitches relaxed. It definitely, um, especially the sleeves, definitely widened a bit because when I was just knitting up the sleeves, the sleeves would like snug like this against my arm. So with blocking it, it definitely relaxed a lot, which I like. I definitely think this is the right amount of positive ease that I would have wanted in a sleeve. I definitely like how this, you know, turned out. Um, the body, everything relaxed really nicely. And I just love how this fit. I'm glad that I didn't do any um, alterations like to the, the body. I just knitted it how it was required in the pattern besides the length i left the body alone i didn't do any waist shaping or anything and i like how the cardigan drapes on my body i'll try to insert some footage to show you how it fits i really like how it looks i just i love how overall this cardigan just looks really pretty to me i love the drape and the shape of it just the the look of brioche it's just so pretty i love it and with the mohair it gives it a nice fluffiness that i really love you know the woolly the woolly yarn.com their mohair isn't as fluffy i would say as other well the only other mohair i've ever used the drops kid silk but it still feels pretty good it doesn't feel very prickly against my skin and I think it still gives a decent amount of um, halo to the garment. Like my other sweater that I use, that I use the drop kid silk with, that has like a really thick halo. This one doesn't have such a thick halo, but I think it still looks pretty to me. I don't mind that it's not as thick as the other one. I think this is, this is fine for me. This is not an issue. So yeah overall i love it i love the look of brioche you know it has a very similar look to it like um the fisherman's rib that i just love these stitches on the shoulder here i love how that looks it just looks so 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 pretty i love to see how that looks on brioche and then you know the double knitting with the mohair just looks so pretty i just love this cardigan i love how it turned out i'm really pleased with it it definitely satisfied my craving for this type of rib ribbing on a sweater or any kind of garment so i'm cool with it i'm happy i'm pleased with what i've created i know that 
I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this because I'm going to wear this with everything. Considering the color that it came out to be in the end, it definitely is going to go with pretty much anything in my wardrobe. So I'm going to be wearing this everywhere. People are going to be sick of me. I do not care. This is going to get a lot, a lot of wear. So I'm, I'm happy. I knitted off my dream cardigan. I'm pleased. <laughs> so yeah, that's just my summarized um, experience knitting of the acne cardigan. So I would say that if you have any prior experience with doing like double knitting, I don't think the brioche stitch is a step, a far step up from that. So you shouldn't find too much difficulty in knitting this up. If you have experience um, knitting sweaters or doing front, doing the back yoke or the front yoke first and then doing the back and joining front pieces, you, it's not going to be a difficult pattern to understand. So definitely highly recommend if you would like a cardigan that looks like this and you'd like to make it yourself, this should not be an issue. So yeah, so thanks for watching my vlog. I hope that this was informative, that you enjoyed it and it gave you some ideas and some inspiration for what you would like to make with your own um, materials. So again, thanks for watching and bye for now.